All right, we're back, and we were talking about branding and your image and why they're so important. So, have you been thinking about, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a couple things that we need to outline in order to be able to focus right on what we need to. And some of it's self-evident, but it's great to go over this. It's, uh, it doesn't make you think to talk about it. It makes you think when you write about it. <clears throat> so when you're thinking about, um, let's say advertising <clears throat> your brand, now, brand is marketing. Getting that brand out there is advertising. So people sometimes confuse the two. They think they're synonymous and they're not. Advertising your brand. <clears throat> because we know that HR function is looking for keywords, you have to be able to create documentation that has the kind of keywords that will get them interested. <clears throat> keywords will just get somebody interested, and not even a, a body, just a, a program, right? Now, for the longest time, I had keywords in my resume the whole bottom part of my resume, it was a two pager. And so I used all the rest of the, the last page as keywords, but they were in white. So what would happen is they would scan these and they just randomly scan them in. And the, uh, the, they wouldn't do it as an image. They didn't have to do OCR because there was the text. And now it's an XML with a docx format. So, they would get a ton of keywords that weren't even visible on the printed resume. <clears throat> Is that awful? Is it horrible? Well, if you're just listing accomplishments, you might not have enough accomplishments to mention every keyword that you know they're interested in. So just be aware of keywords. Uh, in web pages now, we call them meta, but uh, you know, meta being like about. So think about that. How you're gonna promote yourself with keywords uh, and, and again, we're talking about advertising. Advertising, advertising is getting you, getting somebody interested. It, it's not the evaluation, okay? Advertising is that blinking sign that you see on the side uh, of the road and, and it makes you look and you go, what is that? And it's bright and blinky and things. Then you notice what it is and you say, oh, it's, this service or that type of product or this company. Oh, it's a brand. I know it's a, it's a Walmart or a Walgreens or a, it could be anything, a Taco Bell. So the brand, if there is no established brand name, what do you see? When you, when you go down the street, take a look, you're only going to see advertising of concept because there is no association with you for company, just concept. So you don't know who's there. You have, you've never been there before. <clears throat> you don't recognize the company, but Hey, they sell burgers. So that's what caught my eye. Person concept company can serve you very, very well. So the keywords got you in, they, they got, they got you interested, but it just got you noticed, you know? They just happen to notice you as a result. You're just that, that little roadside thing that somebody drove by. Well, understanding HR's function, like we talked about in the last video, makes things very, very easy. They have very little information, very little education, no time, and no understanding of what you do. So what do you do? You know, we're used to lecturing and teaching lots of different people. So what do you do in that situation? You can't change them. So you have to change your delivery. 
right? Your objective isn't to make them happy. Your objective is to get past them. So we have uh, an axiom that, that I've brought up before, one of my favorites, which is, uh, as I say, never give anyone enough information to say no. Now, what happens in resumes is that people think that they have to have a lot of keywords in order for HR to be able to pass you on to the next level. Now, in certain job categories, that might be true. We're a bit, you know, we're a mixed pot of skills. We're, we're not one skill, we're not a one trick pony. <clears throat> so it doesn't work as well for us. If you already say that you're a sales engineer, sales engineer as your previous jobs, that's probably gonna get you past HR and that's great. You know, you're, you're a sales engineer, we get it, software, whatever. So, the soft skills, because uh, I consider these, these keywords are, are what we can call hard skills, are just, they're, they're tactical. They're, uh, think of it as just what it is. It's just an acronym, a software name, or whatever. They're all just keywords. <clears throat> you know, we add experienced in and fluent in and all that, but really none of that matters. To the people that you needed to you want to give them not no information because then they go this person's you know throw that one out but you want to give them enough information that they go yeah this one should be at the next stage so you're going to go to somebody who's in that department who actually understands the keywords and the experience and the impact that'll have on the job hr is there to filter out 99 percent of everything that comes at them it's their only job and as we've seen, they're very, very good at using the shredder. So the soft skills are things that come out not in the lines of the resume. So the soft skills are the things that we control most. We don't control the hard skills. They're looking for only VBA, that keyword, or they're only looking for welders or their CNC or whatever. They control that and they can use that as a throttle and a stopgap. And let's face it, if, if it wasn't on your resume, odds are you weren't making a big deal out of it, which means you're not going to be considered anyway. So who cares, <clears throat> right? You're selling yourself. Now, who do we sell to? Remember what Billy the Kid said, right? We sell to people that are buying. So I'm trying to qualify them just like they're trying to qualify me. Too many times we, re, we, we, we reinforce this feeling that they're in charge. But as you know, from sales, uh, uh, exercises, courses and such, people will only be in charge if you hand it to them, if you let them be. People typically are used to following and that's what school teaches them to obey doesn't teach them any skills it just teaches them to obey so what we want is we want to deal with um the soft skills right from the beginning whenever you talk to somebody whenever you say thank you notes things like that be sincere genuine and personal so what are the kind of soft skills that they might find unannoy uh, uh, excuse me annoying or make you unpresentable to their prospects and their clients. Well, one of the things that differentiates a rock star from just some engineer that uh, got a nice suit and hangs out with the sales guys and calls himself a sales engineer is that we have a certain set of skills that we use all the time, not just when we're on, okay? One of the tests that I like to give people is uh, I say, uh, say no to me. Say no. Tell me I can't do something I want to do. Doesn't matter what. <clears throat> Tell me no. And watch to see if they're using negative words, like they might just say no. Okay, you, you really failed miserably. What I meant to say was, 
but I don't tell them is without saying no. Now, maybe I should just have this off in a completely separate video about the dynamic of conversation, honor, escapism, things like that. The, uh, the adult, child, uh, adolescent, the, the whole the whole thing, PAC. But but just just we'll just dip our little toe in it. Your soft skills allow you to be evaluated from the very, very first person you talk to. Like I, my rule is the lower they are in their organization, receptionist, uh, uh, assistant, things like that, the better I treat them. Like nobody gives them personal attention. I go, Hey, what's your name? You know, how long you been here? You know, it looks like you like it. You got, is those your kids? Oh, they look nice. You, you really make everybody feel really special and that you genuinely care. That person is going to go straight to the hiring manager and go, Oh my God, were they applying for a job? Cause they were so nice. Or if you don't listen to me, you're going to ask somebody, oh, are, are you, are you uh, involved in the high? No, I'm just their session. Oh, well, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to somebody who, who, uh, who can help me here. And they're going to go and they're going to say, what an asshole. Don't hire that person. No matter what, I hate them. Which way would you rather have it? I find out what kind of flowers they like, what kind of, I mean, look around, look at the desk. If you're at the hiring manager's office, look at their assistant, their secretary, whoever, and start noticing things. Say them aloud in your head, like, like lilies, like lilies, has pictures of has kids with three kids, the beach, you know, you start saying it over and over in your head so you don't forget. And then jot it all down in the car when you're out of the interview. Jot all those little details down because they're going to start fading really quick. So to say no to me, well, how would you do it? How would you tell me no? I know you're sitting here thinking like, what a stupid thing that is. No, it's not. If somebody's going to ask you something, they're going to challenge you in an interview in such a way that you have to say things negative if they're doing their job right. And either way, you should be prepared. So <clears throat> say no to me. Let's, let's, uh, I'll take an example. I'll, I'll, I'll take and I'll, I'll give you a hint. Uh, prospect says, we're going to buy your product because it's going to let us do X. Now, you know, the sales rep is going to say, absolutely. Yeah. And you're going to go, oh my God, what is he telling them? Well, now you can't be on record as saying that they're right. But you also can't agree with the sales rep when he says, oh, yeah, whatever they want, we'll sell it. And if we don't do it, we'll make it. Right? Don't you hate those words? So how do you deal with it? Uh, a whole thing about dealing with sales reps, the psychology of, of, of sales reps uh, aside, one of the things that I like to do is I go, well, I'm going to give them a qualified yes. That's what I call this. A qualified yes can seldom start with something like yes, but, and I'm don't, you know, it's not just this phrase, uh, examples. It is true that we could help you with that in that area. Our sweet spot, however, lies in this and you have a need for that in a way that I really am looking forward to showing you. Now I haven't exactly said no, and I've given somebody what's called a way out. Now, while we're talking about the, the way out and, and, and cause now it's going to get a little bit confrontational, got to remember a few things. Always say things that empower the other person. So here's where our way out comes from that. Now, now, if you don't know what a way out is, uh, if you're, and we'll get to that when we talk about the next question, the, uh, a way out is for someone to get out from under saying or doing something wrong with dignity without having them uh, put down in front of their peers or have you look like an asshole, even if it's just you and them by saying something to put them down that really rubs them the wrong way. 
Um, you're not here to tell me what I did wrong. You're here to get a job, you know, that kind of thing. You don't want to get confrontational. So I like to say things that can always turn, if they're not questions, they're statements that make them empowered. So I would, you know, can you do this for me? We can make it happen. Now that I didn't say I could, I said, make it like I might have to hire somebody else, but you know, whatever the circumstance I can say, I can make that happen because again, I'm not limiting myself to what my software might be able to do. They're not looking for features. They're looking for a solution and they aren't that good at putting all these little pieces together to make a solution. You might just be one of those pieces, but you know what? You know what they're looking for. One neck to choke, right? They don't want to have 15 people on a project, 15 different companies, and they got to somehow sort it out because everybody's pointing at each other. So we will say that I think that's a great idea. And we actually talked about that on the way over here, but we weren't even sure if you'd, if, if you'd really go for it. Now, I'm just telling them that their idea is a great idea. I'm not, I'm not stopping them. I'm not standing in front of the bull, right? The bullfighter does not stand in front of the bull. The bullfighter puts out the cape and takes the hit, but not head on, right? I'm not trying to stop that bull. This person has thought about this for quite a while. And even though they may be a gatekeeper or a coach or a shark or a sniper, or even the hiring manager, um, who has their own favorites, you still can't burn bridges. So you have to say things like, we were thinking about doing that as one of our options. Okay. What did I just do? Open the door up. We have not decided on the right way. You and I to do this. Why? Because I am always a trusted advisor. I don't want to come across as a salesperson or somebody who helps the salesperson. I don't want to become, I'm not selling anything. The beauty of this is, and I can be in a room with say 20, 30 people around a big conference table and I've got people on the phone and I'm trying to project some PowerPoint crap on the, on the wall. And I just turn all that off and I get right to the dry board and I go, okay, let's, let's talk about what we're really trying to accomplish here. We, and I start using this language of us, what would we like to see? What do you think is expected of this project? How are we going to make our customer happy? Because the, the, the project, the thing that you're talking about is ultimately is somebody's project, right? They're responsible for making, how can we make them look good in this landmine of choices? And I start to build this language that again, in psychology draws people into contributing. Well, what am I doing? I'm qualifying the deal, but I'm doing it in such a way that everybody gets to contribute. And what does that mean? Everybody owns it. Okay. When you get everybody in the room, owning the solution, having a piece of it, and they always gravitate towards success, right? Then the little snags like, well, the features we have don't exactly match this over here, but I know a way to get the objective done regardless of that and still let you have non-customized software config. Okay. Customization, not okay. Right. And when you give these answers, remember something always do ideas, concepts, sales, proposals, discrete sales opportunities, things that are complementary or uh, enhancing. Don't, and maybe I have enough red left here. Don't bring up, do challenge, say things that are a displacing or a disruptive nature. We're not coming in here to replace everything that you guys have staked your reputation and bought and told everybody it was going to last 10 years. No, 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 no. We're here to enhance what you've done and to complement the direction that you've got the whole company going here. And rightly so, we totally agree. 
by adding some functionality that will be tacked on to what you've done in such a way that will dovetail directly towards your objectives. And here's how. All right, so you're not just saying it, you're showing it. So you have to have game when it comes to talking to people to be able to switch gears in the middle of what you're saying based on uh, body language. And this is gonna happen when you're in your interview. Zzz, I have several typically with, with, a, with a candidate. And you're gonna have to always say things that are positive, that they empower. If it's about something that is bad, I'm sure there's a reason that that's being used or that it was chosen. And at the time, I'm sure it made a lot of sense. You see what I'm doing? I'm giving somebody a way out. What would you think about someone who bought the following? Now, you know what they're doing. They're baiting you, right? Because they want you to say something bad about somebody in the room or somebody not in the room because they want to diss you. Think very carefully about that. Everything you say is not only going to be remembered, but it's going to be remembered wrong. So say things in a simple way that's always positive. That way people can always go, well, you know, I left the meeting. He's a real positive person. Didn't seem to throw anything out there, right? So you're, you're doing this when it comes to your, your selling. Do it when you're selling yourself. Keep it simple. Don't change how you do what you do for you just because you're selling you instead of a thing. The other question that I love is uh, right along the same lines. Say you're wrong. And again, without saying <laughs> you're wrong. So how do you, do, and I, I actually dipped into this a little bit by accident uh, just a minute ago. You're, you're being courted to install something that will not work with what they have. Right, so they bought an ABC and they think it's gonna connect up to their DEF. Now they're asking you to come in and maybe be this thing that you know can't happen. Or they want you to hook this up or make this work or whatever that they bought because they can't figure out how to do it. Well, you already know it can't be done. So how do you tell somebody how, this is a, a, a gauntlet kind of a question. This is a question they could throw at you or you'll discover and have a split second to put a look on your face and have a slick answer that shows that you got your shit together. I ask people, tell me I'm wrong about, tell me I, I, I bought the wrong thing. Tell me I, my, my company's going in the wrong direction. The thing I think is gonna happen ain't gonna happen. How are you gonna give me the bad news? Give me the bad news and don't piss me off. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people can't do that right off the top of their head. You wanna be a rock star? Get used to it, practice it. What would you say? Make it natural so that when it does happen, boom, it just rolls right off next issue. Can you think of how you would do that? Or are you just watching the video? Think about it. Pause the video if you have to. Well, for me, I lead with a way out. In other words, you have to make, when you say no, or you say no to something that they thought or committed to, Understanding that somebody put their ass on the line to make this choice, okay? Think, you are going to make somebody look bad no matter what you say. That's the fun of the question, right? What are you going to do when no matter what you do is gonna come across as negative? The first thing you do is commit to never saying anything negative. Even in a negative way. No backhanded, smart-ass answers. Secondly, you remember a couple things that Pat taught you. Always say things that empower, give somebody a way out, and always do things or mention things or whatever that are of a complementary or enhancing nature. These are very broad terms, and I have them that way, and I've thought long and hard over the years about these two words because they are not specific, but they are of a very clear direction. They should make you think. And I also don't like things that take a lot to remember them. I like things very concise. 
horses like PCC, have what they want, want what they have, that kind of thing. You'll always hear those from me. Why? Because I got a bunch of them in my head and I only have so much RAM. Big hard drive, no RAM. So let's think about it. You're wrong. How would you tell me right now that I'm wrong? What I'm, what I'm thinking about, all this stuff I've been talking about, you know, talk to the screen now, you know, tell me how wrong I am. How would you do that? Especially if you wanted a job that I can just snap my fingers and give you. How would you do that? How would you get me to still like you? Now, remember, there could even be an audience. So imagine you're talking to the head shed or somebody who is trying to not look like a dick in front of everybody when you give this answer. Remember, the lower down, the more respect you give people. Don't forget that. It's not that you don't give people up high respect. It's just that you always, you naturally do that. I say it in that way so that it's easy to remember. The further down, treat them like they're further up. It, it, anyway, I could, a whole video on horses and axioms that I've created uh, for methodologies I've created. So let's think about this. I got to give them a way out. I got to say something in a, I'm sorry about all this reflection here. This, oh, it's coming from a light up above. Sorry about that. Um, you should know it anyway. <laughs> so how would I do that? Well, the first thing is just like in negotiation, what's the first thing that you do when you're in a confrontational, uh, situation, right? What's the first thing you say always, whether it's hostage negotiation, somebody's going to jump off a roof or you're confronted with somebody that says we did the best thing, didn't we? Or we bought, we, we, we want you to come in here. We found you to do this. Isn't that what you do? The first thing you say is I understand always. I understand where you're coming from. I understand why you would say that. I understand. That's exactly the choice I would make. Like, wait a second. Sounds like you're, sounds like you're agreeing, Pat. What's up with that? I'm agreeing as part of the qualified yes. So it's why I didn't erase it. I say in your situation, I would have done exactly the same thing. In other words, you can relax the anus. I'm not here to make you feel like a jerk. I'm not going to be, you know what? I support your decision. Oh my God. I'm, I'm setting them up for the way out, aren't I? Under the circumstances, I would have done the same thing, but you know what? Now I introduce information as one of my strategies, information that they didn't have available or was hidden from them as part of the decision process to get the thing. And here's how you do that. What they probably didn't tell you is that the ABC uses a totally different protocol than a DEF. And that it, it may seem like a value, but to get the two to talk to each other, there's a big hidden cost there. Now, what role am I playing? I'm advising them. I'm not selling them an ABC or a DEF. I'm giving them information. I'm consulting for free. Why would I do that? Because I want them to look at me in as, as an objective, helpful contributor toward them knowing enough to make a good decision. And if not knowing enough to choose the person that can remember, not everybody's in the business that you're in. There's some shoe companies out there that use software. So don't assume they know everything that you live, eat, breathe, drink. It's not the way it works. Besides they would do it themselves, right? <laughs> they were. So as a trusted advisor, Hey buddy, it's me and you, you know, not them. They pull the wool over your eyes. They do that all the time. Well, wait a second. I gave them a way out. Hey, I didn't know. Hey, the guys that were here, they told me that, you know, to the ABC, everybody knows in the industry, but I don't say it in such a way that everybody knows that sucks. Why'd you do it? No, 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 no. I say the information's out there, but the people you talk to must have assured you that it was the right product. Okay. I am not standing in front of the bull. I'm not over here with my cape, letting the bull go past me. 
I'm pointing the bull at a third party that I don't even know. I have no idea who it was or what, what happened. And even if it was somebody in the same company, because I'm knowledgeable enough to know this, they can't contradict me. They can't say, well, that's not true. Here, let me show you. And then the, the decider would be like, yeah, go ahead. Prove he was wrong or she. If it was, if it's a, a, a girl sales engineer, God, if I, if I let that, that gender crap get in the way, please forgive me The he, she, it, all that stuff. Um, salesman. That's why I try to say sales rep now, but Oh God, don't get me all caught up on that. All right. You know what I mean? I'm trying to be inclusive without letting it trip me up like it is right now. So the idea is that you always give them a way out gracefully and with honor. So you've already committed to this project up to here. Thank goodness you and I had this talk now because had we not gotten together to discuss this later on, there's some gotchas that you're going to have to watch out for, but I've done this enough times that I know how to get around them. So I'm again, I'm not, I'm saying that what you chose was great. Now, a reason that, uh, or, or one of the, one of the things about this, I guess I'll just keep that much there is that if we, and I'll just I'll try to make this quick. Let's consider dollars over time for a project. If you make a change, right? So this is all about change. If I make a change in the beginning of the project, it's very little money, right? If, if, if they, if they have to change gears, it's very little invested to go either way. However, if they have spent money. It's gone long enough that they bought something. Now it's, it's going to be more money. We're up to here. So as you can see, relatively speaking, the longer you wait to get something done and change it, the higher the dollar value. So here we are and they're on their way from point A, let's just use this chart a different way, to point B. They need to go to C. Now maybe this is a better visual way to, to, to look at this. Either they change right away and they have very little in the way of uh, reparations or you have to wait until later when you turn that ship this way. Now, this is an event, a change event, and you don't have to lead with the confrontation that makes them either admit they made a mistake from the beginning or that there is a graceful way out to get them to where they need to go. You don't have to lead with that. In fact, humble yourself mentally and outwardly by telling yourself, hey, there's a lot of components here. There's a lot of time left. Things have been done that I'm not even aware of. For all I know, this is the best route. So I'm not gonna put my foot down and in my mouth by making absolute statements. What I will say is, from what I've seen so far, dot, 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 based on what you've told me, dot, 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 I think you made the right decision. I think this is the way to go. But I think there's a reason why I've seen folks go toward this direction a little bit when they started out like that. So I haven't told them you have to go back to square one in order to get to your objective. I've simply said, this is a complex issue there are things to be taken into consideration that you're much more knowledgeable in than I am. And for all I know, we don't have to change anything. And you're the outlier in the average of, of the folks that I've seen do this before. No company is like yours. And this is a great way out of you getting trapped and tripped up in your own feet, tripping over your dick, like we used to say in the Navy. 
you have to have a way out too without being wrong. Why? Because if you don't have a way out and you're starting to squirm, they're gonna sense that. The, the, just the sharks are gonna smell the blood and you're chum at that point. So you always have to be confident, always in control, fall back on saying things that empower the people that you're talking to. You know, you guys know more about this than me. You, a lot more thinking went into that decision than what we've been doing here today. I want to get to know why you made that decision because I don't think my assumptions are right about what's best for you until I know. Now, what are you saying? You're saying, hey, you made a big decision here. You really thought about this. You didn't just make this as a quick decision. It's me in this meeting for the, for the past 20 minutes who's making all these assumptions. Who am I? So humble yourself. Say, I, I can tell you what has generally worked for everybody that we've, that we've done this for, but you know what? There were no two that were identical. Let's see what it is about yours that's going to make all that different and, and educate me as to better, more and better ways to use what we're selling for you to make you more efficient, more effective, get rid of the problem, have what you don't want, whatever it may be. So try to make things always positive. I'm not saying be a positive person or anything like that. I'm saying when you interact with somebody, the minute you challenge them and you make them a, 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 a statement instead of ask a question or you ask a, a snide question, you are already, your fuse is burning. You're, you're just about out the door. When you start to challenge somebody on the first time you met them or talking about what they consider to be a good, correct, and sound decision, what have you done? You've immediately made an enemy out of everybody. And now you're trying to backpedal. It's too late. You get that one chance to make a first impression, right? And you just threw it away. So don't be so rushed in saying that something can or can't be done. You may make a more compelling argument and a more accurate suggestion a little bit later on when you're done qualifying the opportunity. Just like you go back for several interviews for them to qualify you for a position, and that's where this comes into play, you're qualifying the decision that they're making. So when somebody says, okay, we have a scenario, they bought our product and they don't like it. We have a scenario where the sales guy has already promised something, but we don't do it. These come up all the time for sales engineering interviews. The sales rep said this, but you know it's not true. How do you break the news to the customer? These are the questions that get you the job. I'm not just saying them because it's part of some rudimentary academia. This is something that you're gonna be asked and you'll have to perform all the time before and after you get the gig. So let's move on and talk about what it is that you're gonna do in this next video to promote yourself. You've got the soft skills down. You're understanding how marketing your brand and then advertising it prevents you from becoming a secret. You now know how to present yourself in person, on phone, Skype, whatever. And you're pretty much ready to go. And you only lack the, the next little piece, the next little trigger that makes the next step happen toward getting that job. And we're gonna talk about the ways, in my preferred way, to make that happen right after this or well, next video after, I'll make this a separate one. So next video.